guys hope you had a great week today is Tuesday the 25th yes the 25th of August what is going on you know I have to admit I'm kind of sick of these hot temps it's so humid and hot out there today I said what are we living in Missouri this isn't Florida this isn't the south <laughs> you know it's really ridiculous um I don't want to say that I'm tired of summer though because I don't know I just love the carefree days of summer I like to be able to walk outside with my flip-flops on or even barefoot just you don't have to grab a coat and a jacket and your gloves and your mittens and your boots and you know wear five layers of clothes and because I know I love fall I really do love fall but I know winter comes after it and Hmm, not a big fan of winter. But anywho, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining me today. I'm excited because you all really loved the art, the Halloween art that I showed last week. So we're gonna finish up the Halloween art this week and I discovered more fall type Thanksgiving art. So uh, next week we will do autumn fall designs. So I'm excited about that. And <laughs> as I was looking for all of these paintings, you think I have a lot of Halloween art? You should see how much Christmas art I have. It probably triples the amount. Because when I was heavy into licensing, I did, I worked with this company that did gift bags and gift boxes. And he liked them in sets of three and three or four. And I mean, he would use as much as I could paint. So I painted a lot for him. We had a great relationship. But it is what it is. My art is not, my art is country and that's who I am. And you know, there was a point in my licensing career when they asked me to paint lighter and brighter and I did. My heart wasn't into it, but I gave them what they wanted. But then when they said, and I did that for Halloween, you'll see some of it today, but then when they did that for Christmas, I did some of it and I don't like it. I don't like bright Christmas colors. I'm sorry, I like warm colors. I like country, the deep, rich burgundies and reds. And I mean, I can throw in some lighter colors here and there, but the, the I don't know, it's just, it's, so anyways, my look just didn't fit the trend that was going on and so, I don't have anything licensed with them anymore. But that is part of business. That is another reason I don't put all my eggs in one basket. That's why I have several irons in the fire at all times. You know, teaching online, um, designing, cross-stitch designing, punch needle, and, you know, doing a little bit of licensing still, and running my Etsy shop. It's a lot. It's a lot, and I'm spread really thin. But I love everything I do and I just, I've been burned a couple times having everything all in one, <laughs> um, in one pot. So, okay. I did not expect to talk about that right at the beginning of my video. So, last week, what's up with my life? Well, as you know, Thursdays are my favorite day of the week because we have the babies and they're just so much fun. I can't say enough about it. And... Oh, little sassy pants. I tell you, that little Ellery, she <laughs> is something else. And then Easton, oh my goodness, meal time with Easton. Meal time with Easton. I said to Kevin last week, because <laughs> I didn't say this to Bree. She wouldn't care. Bree's an, a, just a sweetheart, and, and she's hilarious. But uh, she sent spaghetti, and, you know, they're letting Easton eat on his own. You know, he's what he turned a year old in July so I mean he's only 13 months old and he will use his fork sometimes but it's mostly his hands well anyway she sent spaghetti and I'm just like I think if she sends spaghetti again we will have leftovers or usually whatever we cook um, for dinner they have that as well or no it had to be lunch then I'm so confused. It had to be lunch. Yeah, it was lunch because for dinner we had taco, uh, seas taco, 
tacos geez but you know he can't have the crunchy shell so i just made like this pile of like taco meat and all the trimmings on it he loved it he loved it but anyways god i'm so sorry back on <laughs> back on lunch i said to kevin if she sends spaghetti again i think i'm going to feed him leftovers or i will make grilled cheese ham and cheese sandwich or something because little baby fingers trying to get every little piece of chopped up spaghetti it was everywhere and then he was super tired he was so tired and he was whiny and he kept rubbing his face and he had his face was orange he had it in his ears it was everywhere <laughs> but anyways that's part of the fun right so then um for the weekend we just went to some friend's house on saturday just the four of us hung out, which was nice because normally it's like a bunch of us when we get together. So that was really nice. And then Sunday, I tackled this job, y'all, that has needed to be done for years. I tackled my storage room that's in the basement. It's where I keep all of my, I have like four bins of Halloween, which I have not even had not opened or decorated for Halloween in probably seven, eight, nine, possibly 10 years. I don't know. And then I have all my fall stuff because we have Thanksgiving at our house for Kevin's family and there's, you know, around 30 guests. So I have tons of Halloween or Thanksgiving things. And then Christmas, you know, there's bins of Christmas, but there's also things just from when the kids were little. We had, we had toys, beanie babies, all kinds of things from when the kids were little. Uh, I found two huge things of my clothes winter clothes that I haven't I couldn't even fit into them now just tons of stuff just stored in there and we need to get it out get rid of the things we don't use donate whatever um and then make room for like we have tables and chairs when we have the family over so that's always like out in somewhere in the you know, out in the basement and I want to put it in the storage room having said that I have probably 20 garbage bags full. I have a lot of things to donate. Hopefully they're taking donations. Uh, they weren't the last I knew. Uh, Salvation Army was not accepting donations because of COVID. But anyways, so we are finishing that up. We actually rented a dumpster because I'm like, okay, 20 bags of garbage and I'm not done. And we want to clean out our garage. You know, it's like, let's just purge and get rid of so much junk a lot of it's junk that you can't there's just no salvaging so trust me if it was something cool and salvageable i'd keep it i also found a box of halloween fabric that i'm going to show you guys today and it's also going to be part of the giveaway so stay tuned for that and then for my reward sunday after cleaning in that god awful room <laughs> i went floating in the pond again with my husband and it was wonderful of course we burnt dinner the the chicken wasn't too bad but the um asparagus burnt to a crisp like like just turned into powder pretty much when you touched it yeah so you know when you're floating in the pond you're you don't have any idea of how long you've been in there and evidently it was an hour when we're thinking it's like a half an hour so what what have i done business wise i got two more designs sent out and I got um, one that I know you guys are gonna love. I, I designed something this past week uh, that has two foxes in it. Stephanie, I know you love foxes. This one's really cute. It's got mushrooms and foxes. And you guys have seen the painting. I showed it a long, long time ago as a watercolor painting. Well, I got that charted. And then I got two uh, things back this week. I just got something back today. It's the second part for, um, cause uh, for Fabulous Monsters, I have two per pattern or two chart, two designs per chart. And so I have the, the next release ready to go in October for that. So that's about it. It was a busy week. And then um, oh, I'm doing a Create Tube. After I record this, I'm recording a Create Tube, my number six Create Tube. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I'm trying to start a Create Tube movement on YouTube. It's similar to floss tube, but it's for people that create things, make things, uh, artists, sculptors, um, needle felt artists, just anyone that creates something and, and you know, sells it or what, maybe they don't have to sell it, it doesn't matter. 
if you're a creator of any sort. I'm trying to get people to show their studios and share their work and I, you know because it's really important for artists and makers that the people that love their work get to know them. They feel more connected to the work that way. So anyway I'm trying to start that up on my other vlog, or uh, on my other YouTube channel. So my number six one, I'm gonna record that today. All right, so we're gonna move on to Q&A. That was the longest intro ever. Sorry about that. But... Every American wants healthcare Why? they can afford Why? and trust. Stop. The public option does the... Okay. Okay, I just want my comments, y'all. All right, my battery's about to die. I just put a new battery in this camera. I'll be right back. All right, so q and I'm just doing this on my phone. All right, Judy asks, Teresa, I can't express how much I enjoyed your Halloween art. The characters are charming and the colors are warm yet glow. Can you share what you painted them with? They look like rich watercolor with a matte finish. I have only recently begun to watch your videos and have only seen you painting with acrylics on wood. How do you achieve the boundless, boundless beauty on paper? Okay, yes, it is watercolor. And I use... Is that not focusing? It's trying to focus on my chair. Can you just focus on my face here? <laughs> it's just so bad at you guys. Yes, it's watercolor. And I use Winsor Newton watercolor paints, professional watercolor paints. They are very rich. They the pigment is very rich. So I so I painted with acrylic and oil before I ever used watercolor. And I think that's why I don't tend to like let my watercolors run. And I tend to layer them as if they're <laughs> acrylic paints. And I think that's why they're so rich. Uh, I have loosened up, you know, since my earlier days, but yes, it's all watercolor. Sandra D. She said, I have boundless love for my grandchildren. They are perfect in my eyes. I love how I love all Hallows Eve. The kids on parade are adorable. You mentioned in a floss tube you may design a biscor new. Are you still planning on doing one? Yes, ma'am. It's actually out being stitched by my dear friend Donna Fidoa right now. It's a Newcastle bouquet. So that will be a market release for sure. I I enjoyed designing the Biscor new and that is definitely something I would like to continue because I would like to do a land that I love Biscor new because there's so many elements in land that I love that would really lend themselves to Biscor new. All right, Deanna Ellett. Yes, Ellett, she said, let's see where her question is. She has, um, oh yeah. Okay. So here we go. She said, that she's still having trouble choosing fabric for land that I love. She was wondering, since I have a stash of fabrics, if I could recommend an alternative fabric to the tin roof. I don't have an LNS nearby and it's so hard to judge the color of the fabrics from pictures online. So true. Tin roof looks so dark, I'm afraid the flosses will get lost. I have the chart and floss just in a con con conundrum over the fabric. Please help. Okay. I believe a lot of people are stitching it on Confederate gray. I also believe that my fabric was mismarked and I have a feeling my fabric was actually Confederate gray because whenever I look at tin roof, it is darker than the fabric I had that was labeled tin roof, but I think it was Confederate gray. So Confederate gray by weeks is, is a good option. If you watch pumpkin hollow quilts, uh, oh, there's a handful of them that are doing a sale for land that I love and they're not all using the same linen. So watch them. So go to, I, mm, 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 mm. I'll put it in the, I'll put a link below. I don't know if it's a hashtag on Instagram or if it's a hashtag on YouTube for land that I love. Also, Oh, there's a, there's a floss tuber. I just watched a couple of hers and she's so adorable. She's, she's, I wanted to recommend people watch her. I will put her in the links below too. She is stitching on, she's doing land that I love, but she's got a different fabric too. 
So I will research those and I will put those fabrics in uh, the description box below. However, I did pull some of my fabric that I think would be beautiful for land that I love. Now three of them are Picture This Plus. So you'll have to, you know, if your LNS doesn't have these, there's a lot of online sources that might have it. Um, you know, The Attic, uh, Craft Gallery, Claire Stitching Post. I mean, there's a ton. There's <laughs> Jen Stitching Niche, uh, Teresa Vanette. A lot of these folks carry Picture This Plus. So if your, Ellen, your you know, local shop doesn't have it, you can go online. So I'm gonna show you the ones that I think would look really good. So these first three are Picture This Plus. This is Vellum. This is one of their new ones for 2020. And it is gorgeous. It's it's a kind of a cream, the lightest part is like a cream color. And then the modeling on it is so pretty. It's like a gray. And I really think that would lend itself beautifully to land that I love. And then we have Fawn. This is also a new one for 2020. Um, Fawn, F-A-U-N. Now this one has cream, but it, but the modeling is a little bit more of a beige or a taupe, taupe color. I hope that's showing up good on here. I think that would be pretty. And then I'll show them all. I'll show them all together so you can see the differences. And then uh, vellum. Oh, well, this was new for 2020 as well. Wait a minute. Wasn't that the first one I showed? Oh, I did. I grabbed the wrong one. I'm sorry. Bramble. So here's Bramble, as you can see, I've used it. I love, love, love Bramble. And it's, so if I show them all three together, so here's the first one, Vellum. Let me do it this way. So we have Vellum, Bramble. Now Bramble is a little bit more of a beige color. And then we have Fawn. So if you look at those three, I mean, they're, they're very similar, and I think any of those would look great. Here's one by XU Design. She has a uh, Etsy shop I will link below. This one's called Brown Paper, and it's just a really nice tan. And I think the blues the, and the whites and the, and the reds would, would show really pretty on this because it would be a, kind of a contrast color instead of blending in so I don't know <laughs> it's hard it's it is really hard to say but I think the first three I showed would be my like if I had to pick out of those three hmm I would probably go with this one I'd probably go with vellum I think that's really pretty so I hope that helps you I am so sorry it's it's been a real it's been a real issue I know for for some people. Um, okay, I gotta go back onto my phone. Uh, Gypsy Elves, she asked, she didn't actually ask, says, well, I have to say I have boundless love for your Halloween artwork. I'm also a decorative painter, but not a designer. So I appreciate all you've painted. I think the lampshade in particular would make a great series of smalls. Please and please do a cross stitch of the owls. I don't, I'm not sure. There was no question there, but the owls, the three owls, I think people mentioned that one the most. So the three owls, cold black cats, the raggedy Ann, and then the very last one I showed that has like the creepy guy. Those I'm definitely going to make prints of because they got the most attention. Christy asked, Hi Teresa, I love all your artwork. Is it difficult keeping the inner critic, critic at bay in regards to your creativity and how do you go about doing that? Have a fantastic week. Oh, Christy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It comes, for, for whatever reason, for me, it comes natural. It's not like I never feel insecure about my art, 
but I know when it's right. Does that make sense? Like there's times I can paint a painting and I struggle and struggle and struggle with it. I've even ripped up paintings and said, I just can't do that. So I can't put something out there that I'm not proud of because then I would feel insecure about it. Okay. So, um, I know people struggle hard with that whole inner critic thing, but I, maybe it's because I've been painting for so long and I've had a lot of success in my art career. So it's given me the confidence, but I, it, you know, you don't necessarily start out with that confidence. And how do you gain that confidence by just plugging along? You keep, you keep going for it and don't put things out there that you're not proud of. Um, don't listen to the negativity. I mean, if someone's giving you a legit suggestion or something, you know, listen to those type of things, but people, people online can be really mean. So ignore those people. There's a lot of people out there that are going to love your work. And this is the thing too. You can't please everybody. All of that Halloween artwork I showed, there's probably a gazillion people on the planet that will look at that and go, that's horrible. I mean, they don't like Halloween or they think, you know, they don't like the folk art look. That's fine. Those aren't my people. You know, you got to find your tribe, I guess is what they're calling it these days. The people that like you and like your work and don't worry about the rest because like there's nobody on the planet that can make every single person happy. So, um, I guess that's just my advice for that. Um, you know, I, I had to kind of get tough too, um, tough, thick skin, I guess you could say, because when I was in licensing, you know, they would make me change my artwork. Like I would paint something for them and they wouldn't like it. And they would say, well, can you do this? And can you change that? And, you know, and sometimes it was hurtful. Sometimes it ticked me off. <laughs> And, but you know, they're in it for the bottom dollar, the bottom line, if it's going to sell to their clients or not. So, I mean, I get why they have to give instruction and they have to, you know, make it what they think their clients want or their customers. So, um, but you know, it, at first it kind of, it kind of hurt, but you, you get over it. Um, Marlis Temin, she said, let's see where her question is. Again, she doesn't have a question. <laughs> she was just saying that she liked the three owls and both the Halloween March versions of the kids marching. So she said she could imagine doing both in cross stitch. Okay. See, I put a heart by all the comments that I read, but if there's a question in them, I don't put the heart in so that it's easier for me to find. So I just forgot to put hearts on some of them. Okay, so Tammy, she said, come on, Teresa, why are you holding out on us? <laughs> she said, chart some of those older pieces of art, please. I love that's so cute. She loves cold black cats. Well, thank you so much, Tammy. Uh, okay, another one I forgot to put a heart. Okay. Rebecca Sewing, she said, please explain in your next video exactly what you mean by boundless love. I try to show love for those I care about. I try to show love for my fellow man by being respectful of all people. Is that kind of what you mean? I like the sound of it, boundless love. Yes, Rebecca, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. I mean, um, boundless means um, like unlimited or intense or immense or like passionate, you know, um, and when I say passionate, I don't mean that kind of love. Like, I mean, like just with all of your being, you know, um, and definitely respect for all people, even, even the people that you completely disagree with. I mean, especially in an election year, there's just a lot of stuff going on out there. And you know what? I have friends that are on the other side of the fence. It's okay if we all disagree. It's, it's okay if we all disagree. It's okay if we disagree. You know, um, you have to still respect that person. I mean, that's, I, I don't know where the lack of respect for humanity went. Where have we went wrong? Because, um, 
we are all loved the same in the eyes of God. So why does one person think that they're better than the other person? Or just because I disagree with you, then I can put you down? It just, it makes no sense to me. I, I don't understand that mentality. Um, we are all... Okay, so I don't know if I told you guys this, but when I was at Mass a couple of weeks ago, sometimes I get these visions of paintings that I need to paint during his homily because, you know, he's our priest. I hope he never switches parishes because I just love him. But um, he was, I can't remember exactly now, it was a few weeks ago, but I have this image of a painting that I'm going to do and, and it's going to be... Um, a row of mostly women. I'm, I have to put I have to put a male in with all these females. I don't paint males. I just don't. Uh, but anyways, they're going to have different skin color, different heights, different you know weights, um, different hair color, all of it. And it's going to say we are all created equal in the eyes of God. And then it's going to have all these words all over the painting, like respect, love, kindness, compassion, all these different words that if we just lived our lives that way, if, if, you know, anyways, I do this every week. I'm sorry, guys. It's just, well, she asked the question though. <laughs> she asked the question and, and it just made me think of that painting that, because I have this huge canvas and I never, I'm like, what am I going to paint on this? Well, I would need a huge canvas to paint all of these figures. And it's going to be one of those works of art that I'm going to work on a little bit every week. And it's going to take me years because I want it to be perfect. I shouldn't say years, but at least months or a year. I want it to be perfect in how I have it envisioned in my head. You know what I'm saying? So that's boundless love. Just immense love for other people. Okay, so Isabel, she said she went looking for the haystack in my Etsy shop. She couldn't find it. My bad. I apologize. I didn't realize it was out of stock in my Etsy shop, but it's back in there now. Linda. Do, 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 oh, <laughs> Linda. Oh, my gosh. I was showing you guys my, I mean, I wonder how many of you out there knew I put these things on wrong. Well, actually, I did it like it shows on the picture. So I guess I didn't put them on wrong. But she said, put the foam on your head like a headband. She's done it for a long time. It's easier to move the thing up and down. So that does make sense. So, oh, don't spill my pop. So I had them on like this. And in the picture, that's what it shows. It shows it on your forehead. And then you do this. But now what she's saying is to put them on your head like this. And if it's on top of your head, then I have kind of a bigger nose though, so I don't want, it doesn't really work as good for me. But anyways, thanks for the tip. So basically, if you use these or are you, if you're planning on using these, they're, Basically, there's two different ways that you can use it. So, I appreciate that, Linda. <laughs> My hair's probably a mess now. Would you ever make any of your whimsy chicks into cross-stitch patterns? They are adorable. Oh, Dave Mathis asked, asked that. Actually, I have. In my Etsy shop, they are, right now, they're only PDF downloads. And it, they go towards, you know, helping out the LNSs. Um, but I have a lot of whimsy chicks sketched and painted and i do plan on adding i'd like to have some for nashville kind of like making their debut in nashville so that is definitely in the works uh lynn was talking to me about oh okay i did i didn't highlight it because i need to go back she was just telling me that there's a place where i could probably do some stickers because this company does stickers and wine labels okay so I'm not going to hard it so that I can go back to it later. So that's it for Q&A, guys. Okay. Uh, whips. I did start my punch needle. Remember, I said that was my goal 
or my in my plans anyway, I was gonna try to work on a punch needle start to finish. It didn't happen because I ended up doing working on my house all day Sunday and I yeah, so I didn't I got it started, it's like on the thing and I have like three rows punched <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I do have a couple whips in my painting, for my paintings. This is for uh, Creative Whims Live. We're going to finish that tonight, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. in our private Facebook group. So for CW Live, this, this is going to look like a chalkboard painting when we're done. Uh, we're going to do like a white wash. I don't know, I've never done it before, but... We're going to give it a shot and you'll see the finished painting next week or on Instagram if you follow me there. And then um, last Friday, I spent some time getting some canvases ready to be painted and I started painting her. I just started on her last night at maybe for a half an hour and then today I worked on her for a couple hours. But I love her. And so there's scrapbook paper underneath her, underneath the painting. So this one will be really cool when I get done sanding and staining and antiquing her. But I love this long, narrow shape. Super fun. And now on to one of my favorite segments is your finishes. All right. My sweet, sweet Colleen Holt from Stitching with the Sisterlies. She stitched top hat sheep. Uh, she said it was the first thing she ever cross-stitched. Initially, I didn't even know the X's connected, LOL. <laughs> it was done with the called four colors on 16 count coffee tea dyed Ada. Thank you so much, Colleen. I love it. And you all know her dog's name is Lincoln. So she, um, anything Lincoln, she's all about it. Next, we have Marsha Mitchell. She stitched Seek's wool. And let's see. She stitched every time, every single lost tube, every single one, every one. She stitched with the called for floss, except she used whisper floss for the sheep. Oh, isn't whisper? I think that's the fuzzy floss. Very cool. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us, Marsha. Next, we have Catherine Birkenbein. Let's see, she stitched uh, Teeny Garden from the Celebrate book. Um, it's, it's stitched on Lugana that she coffee tea dyed and she used all the called Ford threads. She mixed up a yellow and an orange, so they're swapped. And then she made the cat and the dog to match what she has at her house. Very cute, that frame is perfect for that piece too. Very cute finishing. Oh, it's not a frame, it's like a tray. Very cool. And then Catherine also had um, the bunny bouquet, that's from the Celebrate book. She changed the flowers to purple so she can have it out through spring and Easter. She mounted it on sticky board with a ruffle and added two more matted fabric pieces for color. It definitely pops in the hanging basket, very pretty. And then she also stitched Create Everyday Freebie that I gave away to the shops at Market this past year. And she changed all the colors to purples and she added some background fabric with a purple bow, which I absolutely love the way she did the purple from light to dark. Very cute. I like how she offset it in the frame too, so she had room for the bow. Very pretty. So thank you so much, Catherine, for that. Awesome. I appreciate you ladies sending in your finished pieces so that we can show everybody different colorways and different ways of finishing. It's just very helpful and I really appreciate it. So if you would like to have your finished Teresa Kogut piece featured in my floss tube, all you have to do is email me at TeresaKogut3 at gmail.com and then just tell me what you stitched on and if you use the called for colors or not and I will feature you in my floss tube. Thank you ladies. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna, stop the video real quick here and um, I'm going to go through the paintings again and then I'm going to go through the fabric for Whims of the Past. Alright, I'll be right back. This is a more recent one. This is in the 4000s. So. This was a, a sketch from Whimsy 365. 
And this one's not numbered. I don't think I, it's, I never even really finished this painting. <laughs> that cat looks like the saddest cat on the planet. This is a more recent one. This was from my Whimsy 365. Again, ugh, the brighter colors. All right, so the next group are like 20, 2,592, 93, 94, 95, 96. So these are like 2,500s. And they're just these small individual ones. So these would be, look at that ghost space. He's so cute. A little dancing owl. I love that witch. I love the spider. I would definitely do these if I did these in cross stitch. They would be more prim colors. I'm not really into purple. Uh, let's see. I think this one goes with that line. I think so because it's got that funny ghost faces. So it's like a border. And then this just says Halloween greetings. Here is from my teddy bear calendar. I'm not sure what year this was. Uh, the number is 3321. Jolly Halloween. This is I did this uh, for a legacy calendar called From the Heart. This number is 2337. Ah, I like I love this pumpkin stack on the side of the house there. Little cat. I love on the porch are is the witch hat, the boots, and the broom. It's cute. I created a painting. Yes, right here, October 2010. The number is 2149 and it's called Moon Dance. So I created this for the From the Heart calendar. I believe it was the October image, if I remember correctly. That was a long time ago, so I could be wrong. So anyways, uh, 10 years ago I painted this. Well, from that image spawned a fabric line and uh, dinnerware line which never came to fruition i worked on it really hard but it didn't it never happened so like i made this plaid this is going to be a platter so basically i mean you can see it and you guys i i did chart like what was it it's like this part of it is charted um and i also did it in punch needle okay so like that part and then these were all like going to be the individual salad plates. That one, well, that's the same. I think they wanted to see it with just orange and not the house. I don't know. I don't know. I bent over backwards getting this done for this company and they never did anything with it. I love this one. I absolutely love her. She's playing the guitar on her broom. And then I did... Uh, that's like the salt and pepper shaker, the mug, the bowl, the big bowl, and then the cereal bowl. And then for the fabric line, this is just a, like an all over star pattern I painted for them. Look how huge that painting is though. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, here's the repeating stripe that I did for the fabric line. Here's like a border piece. I don't know. I, I painted so much for this. Sil I called it Silhouettes is what it was called. Um, the original painting was called Moon Dance, but then the fabric line and all that was called Silhouettes. Here's one. 
So they're basically like this one's got polka dots and pump, green pumpkins at the bottom. I love these little pumpkin guys dancing. And so those three witches, you know, they're similar, but they're different than these three witches. And then they've got owls and big circles in the border. So they're, you know, just slightly different. And then here's some, here was the logo for Silla Witches. I was going to trademark it, but it's expensive to trademark things, so I didn't do it. I love that. I love the polka dot on that. And they made a fabric of just like that polka dot. I think that's the fabric I'm using on the back of my Fabulous Monster cross-stitch pieces. <laughs> and then here's just some more things that I designed for. I think these were for the, for the fabric. I can't remember. I like this one too. I love the, the cats dancing on the broom. And that one's cute too. All right, I think that's it for Silla Witches. I mean, do you think that's enough? Oh no, it's not. I just found another one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's another plate. More plates. They're all starting to look the same to me. And then here's another plate. Oh, and here's another plate. Now I think we're done with Silhouettes. This is a shade I made for Village Candle called Starlet Witches. The number on it is 2011. But those little witches, they're, they're way more cutesy than some of the other witches I do. Anyway. This was for the teddy bear calendar. Um, this was for, for the 2007 calendar. Good Lord, that's an old painting. Uh, this is called Dress Up. This is number 2091. This was for the teddy bear calendar as well. Here's a Halloween image, um, number 1744, Halloween night. And I don't even know, these aren't even numbered, so I don't know what I, I just was playing around with some black cats anyway. But aren't they fun? I love that they have big, huge, well, I was gonna say bows, one has a bow tie, the other one just has, I don't know what you call that. And they got cute little hats. Here's a creepy, weird looking owl. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking on that one. And then I found, I found these little guys. They should have been shown last week. Actually, I need to go, I'm going to set them aside so I can put them with that last week. All right, so then I have this line, which I never finished. You know why? I, let me just explain. All right, so this is, says jo Joyful Halloween. I'm trying to remember. Somebody wanted me to paint these. But I thought it was fun that their vine is black and that keeps them all attached. So then I have these fun, fun, fun dancing skeletons. Look at that dancing skeleton. He's so cute. <gasps> Something's falling. All right, so then I've got two more dancing skeletons, but I didn't paint them. I don't know. Abort operation here. I guess for whatever reason, I just decided maybe they decided they weren't going to use it, and so I decided not to finish painting them. I don't know. And then there's this, which, if I remember correctly, I said, why am I painting all this black when I can go in and Photoshop it? So that's what I did. This, all these little kiddos, they're so cute. But if you imagine them all filled in in black. So we got like a dinosaur guy, a little bunny rabbit. Oh, that's this fabric I'm about to show you. They mixed this with the Silhouettes. That's what it was. He's a little Martian guy. He's a little clown. She's a little butterfly. Or, yeah, butterfly. And he's a little hobo. Huh? 
they're so cute. So anyways, I photoshopped that in. And then here's some just, these were actually the fabulous monsters, but they wanted them just black so that they would be like the silhouettes. And the same with this, I'm sure you recognize those characters, those little kids marching. Again, they just wanted them in black. So I went in and photoshopped those filled in on black, but I like that trick or treat sign at the bottom. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna break there and show you that fabric then, since that fabric has to do with those little kids and the silhouettes. So this fabric is called Halloween Party by Teresa Koga. It was Marcus Fabrics. Uh, it doesn't say the year, so I don't know what year they did this, but the design number is 4723. But I'm telling you, it was years ago, so to be able to find it now, probably not going to happen. No, it doesn't say. Let me take the sticker off and put it on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to stand back, I guess, and show you what it looks like. Look at how freaking bright it is, though. I'm sorry. I just don't like bright Halloween colors like that. I mean, I swear that would glow in the dark. So you can see, like, all these right here. These are all those little kids in the silhouettes. All these are... And then you got the houses and you got the dance, the witches, like this is one of the Scylla witches right here. The house, um, you know, more kids trick or treating, like I just showed you. So, and then the rest are pretty much just coordinates for that piece. This one I love and adore. That's my collar right there. <laughs> Black with gray. I don't mind this orange. It's a bit bright. It's just a bit bright. Um, but I can handle it. I don't mind this one so much either. I love this pattern. It's just a little bit bright though, y'all. And then we got like the little moons with the bats and then the little witches in there. Now this next one, ah. Oh. I'll be using this for some finishing for sure. Isn't that cool? I love that one. And then this. Put those stickers on the inside. Um, so here they just took some of those little characters. The dancing owl, silhouettes, a little kid dressed up as a dinosaur. You know, all the little kids and stuff. Put them in little circles. And then they did this. That's the same pattern, just in a different color way. It's showing up yellow on my camera, but it's quite bright orange. And then this purple. I don't know. Just It's just a pattern. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but I don't mind this so much. They did a lot of colorways with that one. Jeepers. And then last but not least, they did it in green as well. So that is going to be part of the giveaway. I'm going to gift uh, a piece of several of those fabrics. I'm just, I'm not going to let, like, let you choose which ones, but I'm just going to do a nice mix so that you can use them in your finishing for Halloween finishing, okay? All right, now back to the paintings. Here's another one. I'll try to go a little faster. 3059 My Three Jacks. This was done for the teddy bear calendar at one point. This was done for the From the Heart calendar years ago. Uh, Halloween House, number 2245. I love these guys. I They're like... They're supposed to be like scarecrows, but you take a, a, a log and then you put branches on them so they look like arms. And actually this whole thing's the log and then you just carve off the bark here and put a face on it and put like a leather or a tin 
piece around for the hat. Anyway, I've seen, I saw it somewhere. Somebody made those. So I put them in this painting because I thought they were cool. All right, Halloween house. Oh, my nose itches. These were done. Oh, I can't remember. I, I want to say I did these for. Oh, it was a series of something. But see, they're all different. So that was just one Halloween one, I guess. Yeah, there's like one for every season. I think I think they were garden flags, if I remember correctly. Okay, I like this. I like that guy. Hist and hark, draw close and tremble. Tis this night that goals assemble. Not goals. Not goals. <laughs> ghouls. Oh my lord, I swear I said ghouls. Ghouls assemble. <laughs> and I love this. The moon. And evidently, somebody wanted me to make the, that into um, cups and bowls and such. I don't remember that ever happening either, but, you know, you got to try, right? I love that. That would have been cool. And this was like a square plate. And then this was... I think I did this for like paper plates, if I remember correctly. This smaller plate was supposed to be able to fit into that other square plate when they're sitting on the table. All right, so that, that first guy I showed you, the um, Hist and Hark, all right, I did other ones that to go with him this number is 2170 it's called 12 o'clock at 12 o'clock on halloween many strange things can be seen but look at that cat on his lap i love this one i love it i love it So I did like a series of those paintings. Be brave and bold for on Halloween night, some mischievous cats may give you a fright. Ugh, I wasn't holding it so you could see it, sorry. I love that he's holding onto his own tail. And the pumpkin is actually made into a cat too, that's fun. And then I did this guy just by himself, so I think he was meant to be photoshopped into the center, obviously without all the white background, into one of those. And then we got this witchy. It says, on the night of Halloween, tis when a witchy may be seen. And so you can see this. Remember I showed you that plate? It has that same background. But she's cool. She's got black fingernails. I love that. All right. I've only got like four more to show you and then we're done with Halloween. Love this one too. I think that would be a cute cross stitch. I did him as a cross stitch already though. This guy. And then this is like... This reminds me of an old-fashioned, like, vintage postcard. I like the little cats in the corners holding the brooms. Two more. Nineteen seventy eight. Google Eyes is the name of that one. And then last but definitely not least is Spooky Night number one eight six eight. And I think that just speaks volumes for <laughs> Halloween night. Like he's got the flashlight and they're, you know, out trick or treating and the this little owl 
flies above them and spooks these two, but that little guy is like, hi, waving to it. I don't know. I just think it's precious. So there you have it. And I, I'm guessing that's all of my Halloween art, but you know, I might have more somewhere else, but oh, this was pretty much the bulk of it. Okay, so my section, what's new on Etsy, I am going to be scanning some of the Halloween art and putting it in my Etsy shop. If you sell something that you just have to have, let me know which one it was. Screenshot it with your phone. Email it to TeresaCogat3 at gmail.com. You can do it that way. Or if I called out a number, you can let me know which number. But there's like a handful of that I'm definitely going to offer as prints. Um, what are my plans? Well, my plans are this. My mom and Jerry are leaving this weekend to come up here. They are going to, they didn't want to come because of staying at the hotels. So what they decided to do was they are going to drive 14 hours. I don't know. I don't know how Jerry can drive that far <laughs> at his age. I mean, he's so spry and energetic for his, I just think it's awesome. So he's driving 14 hours to my Aunt Marsha's in Southeast Missouri. They're gonna stay there a few days and visit and then they're driving up here, which is another 12 hours. Then, so I don't know, they will be here mid of next week. They will probably stay for a couple weeks and, and then on the 15th, Kristen comes into town. So, um, yeah. I'm in full on cleaning and organizing mode and I've got to go to Hobby Lobby. I think I'm going to go Friday and to Hobby Lobby. I need a side table for a bedside table. I have one for one side. I need one for the other side and I need to get a couple lamps. But I was kind of hoping they were coming after Kristen came because I am going to buy that piece of furniture from her. Um, that's going to be the dresser in that room and it's going to be so gorgeous. But um, I'm going to hang the mirror in there and put the the closet doors up. But other than that, oh, and i got to buy, like, all new bedding. Um, yeah, so I got all that to do. i got to finish that bedroom this weekend and also finish that room in the basement. I don't think I'm going to be doing any punch needle. I really hoped I would do more punch needle, but I don't know. This week is shaping up to, shaping up to be super busy. But, you know, it's all things that needed to be done. We always do a lot of deep cleaning and organizing around the fall anyways because we have all the company coming over for Thanksgiving. So it's just kind of something we do anyways. It's just a little earlier this year. All right, giveaway. So you had to say Boundless Love and I the win or yeah, the winner gets to pick out a Halloween print, an eight by ten. You can pick it out 11 by 14 if you want, but 8 by 10, 11 by 14, something like that. And I will insert the YouTube random comment picker here. All right, so you had to say boundless love to be entered into the drawing. And our winner this week is Kathy Harris. Congratulations, Kathy. She said, I think my favorite is the black cat on the pumpkin, number 336. I really enjoyed seeing all of your Halloween art. Wonderful. I have boundless love for my grandkids. So congratulations, Kathy, and thank you everyone for participating. Congratulations, Kathy. If you could please email me at TeresaCogat3 at gmail.com. I will get you a print in the mail ASAP. So uh, this week, I'm going, like I said, I'm gonna give you some of uh, that Halloween fabric for finishing. And this week's angel, what does it say? I'm gonna read the front to you right now because it's small not one of them fail uh, nope not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge so do not be afraid you are worth more than many sparrows matthew 10 29 through 31 i love that one doesn't that give you some comfort i mean like gives me comfort okay so here's the angel and on the back it says life is full of choices Choose wisely. Make choices that bring you closer to becoming the best version of yourself. It makes me think of when our kids were, 
younger, like all of my girlfriends and I, when our kids, cause our kids all hung out together and they're like, oh, we're gonna go for a bike ride. And we're like, okay, make good choices. <laughs> it was just something that we always told our kid. Kids, make good choices. Hey, we're gonna, you know, go to so-and-so's house. Okay, make good choices. <laughs> was like the last thing we would say to them. Make good choices. You know, I was listening to somebody on, on YouTube. Anyways, they were just talking about successful people and how basically to become a successful person, you work hard and you make good choices. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's so true. I mean, it, it sounds that it sounds pretty basic, but it's pretty true. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I hope that it's not boiling hot where you are and that you're getting a little bit of relief from this heat wave. I think next week it's supposed to be cooler. So I told my mom, get you and Jerry, get up here. It's going to be so nice. And it's like 105. I think it's supposed to be there in Florida today. So I'm like, I'm sorry. I could not even handle that. Thank you so much for being here for watching. I appreciate all your comments. Keep them coming. And I just want you to remember it's up to you to create every day. Bye.